The Catherine trial was a study that looked to, at patients who had residual disease after receiving preoperative chemotherapy and trastuzumab, and then took those patients with residual disease and randomized them to receive 14 cycles of TDM1 in the adjuvant setting or to receive trastuzumab in the adjuvant setting, and then looked to see if TDM1 resulted in fewer recurrences relative to trastuzumab. And what was found was that there was a dramatic reduction by the use of TDM1 instead of trastuzumab with a hazard ratio of about 0.5. And so really a 50% reduction in recurrences from using TDM1 relative to trastuzumab. You know, I think this trial is also was very exciting because it found benefit regardless of um, you know, hormone receptor status, regardless of whether or not patients had received um, dual HER2 directed therapy in the pre op setting versus not. Um, and so, really, there wasn't a subgroup that didn't benefit from use of trastuzumab, sorry, use of TDM1 relative to trastuzumab in this study. One challenge, however, was that TDM1 did not reduce rates of CNS recurrence relative to trastuzumab that rates of CNS recurrence were the same in both arms. And so I do think that this continues to be an area that we need to work on to see, um, are there ways that we help can help further prevent CNS recurrences, even though TDM1 is doing a great job at, at, in general at, at preventing recurrence, again, we're not doing very well at preventing those CNS events. So there is further work that is being done in this area. Um, there is an arm of the COMPASS trial, which is taking patients who have residual disease and randomizing them to receive either TDM1 or to receive TDM1 and ticatinib. Uh, we know ticatinib is a HER2-directed tyrosine kinase inhibitor that does have CNS penetration and has had activity in the CNS in patients with metastatic disease. And so we're hoping that potentially adding ticatinib in this setting may also help prevent CNS recurrences. So certainly more to come in this area. There was work that was done to look at patient reported outcomes in the Catherine study and really showed that there was no overall global deterioration in health um, in the TDM1 arm relative to the trastuzumab arm. And while there were some small changes in the TDM1 arm um, with particular symptoms that were slightly worse than the trastuzumab, overall, again, global health was maintained across both arms. I think this is particularly important uh, because we are you know, giving 14 cycles of additional therapy that while TDM1 is an antibody drug conjugate, technically is chemotherapy. And so you know, with prolonged exposure to treatment, we really want to make sure that we're able to maintain patients' quality of life. And in general, I think what this shows is that TDM1 is generally well tolerated now, there were some patients who did need to discontinue TDM1 early. We did see in Catherine that approximately 18% of patients did not complete all 14 cycles of therapy. And I think this was for a myriad of different reasons. Um, there wasn't one particular toxicity driving discontinuation. But generally speaking, again, TDM1 has been very well tolerated with, again, the patient reported outcomes showing very good preservation and global health.